Hey there, welcome to the channel. My name is James, and here at 20th and 21st Movies, we are about all things cinema. All right, this is time for part two of sharing my horror movie collection on physical media series. So I'm sharing my horror movie collection in this series of three videos as part of 31 Days of Horror this October 2023. Part one of the series I shared a few days ago, and in that part one, I shared my contemporary horror movies in my collection. I define contemporary as films that came out in the 21st century, so from the year 2001 to present day. I'm now going to cover my classic horror movies in my collection, and I'm going to do it in two parts. The first part in this video today, I'm going to share with you my classic horror movies that came out in 1980 through the year 2000. So that's going to get us from 1980 through the year 2000. And in part two of my classics horror collection, which is three, part three of this series, I'll share with you my classic horror titles that are before that came out before 1980. So I'm breaking up the classic piece between 1980 to present day and before 1980. So this is part two where I'm going to share my classics. The first part of my classic films from 1980 to 2000. I cannot wait to share with you these titles on the other side of this. And I'm looking forward to hearing what you think about these titles. All right, so let's share our, or my horror movie collection from 1980 to 2000. So this is part one classics. And of course, as you can imagine, the thing is included in that. I'm gonna just keep this menu going up here. But the first title is Friday the 13th. Coincidentally, Friday the 13th is in October. So the 13th of October is on a Friday, but who doesn't love this classic horror movie, Friday the 13th? So good. I revisited it for the first time after many years with this release from last year. Fantastic. The Shining, or the all-time classics, Stanley Kubrick's The Shining. I love this film. This film has some controversy in that Stephen King, the writer of the novel, The Shining, wasn't fully happy with, with this film adaptation from Stanley Kubrick. So there's a little bit of controversy around that. I happen to love this film. I love Kubrick's work. So I love the film. I respect Kubrick as a filmmaker, but I also respect Stephen King as the writer. So I have love for both of them and I respect their points of view, but that's a really, really good film. The Shining starring Jack Nicholson. In the first video, my contemporary uh, horror movies, I shared Dr. Sleep, which is a fantastic film and a great follow-up to the original Shining. It just does a nice job of expanding the Shining universe, so definitely check out Dr. Sleep. And also, check out my first video in this series of contemporary horror titles. So definitely check that out if you haven't had a chance to do so. The Fog, discovered this film last year. Love this release. Of course, I got my slip cover, got a little rip in it. Oh well, I'm not the I'm not the biggest slip person, but that is a little annoying seeing that. But The Fog's a good movie, really enjoy seeing that. Of course, up here we have the menu to The Thing, the John Carpenter classic film starring Kurt Russell. This is a phenomenal film, one of the best horror movies of all time, John Carpenter's The Thing. Really good stuff. Super good stuff. Alligator. I had this in my collection. I picked this up a few months ago, but I haven't seen it yet. Heard good things about it. Heard nothing but good things about the transfer for this particular title. So I'm looking forward to checking this film out. It's Alligator. So heard this cheesy 80s horror. So I'm looking forward to it. David Cronenberg Scanners on Criterion, spine number 712 in the Criterion Collection. This is a Digipack edition. I got this when it was when they were still doing the dual format. So this is Blu-ray and DVD. So really, really good film. Really enjoyed this movie. It's not Cronenberg's best. It's not my favorite of his movies, but it's pretty good. You know, it has that famous head explosion scene and you know, it's a decent horror flick. An American Werewolf in London, of course, now the uh, lawn people are doing their work out there, but An American Werewolf in London, hope, hope that that is not too distracting, but 
This was my very first Arrow title. I think this was my first before RoboCop. This is a really good film. This was my very first of these Arrow Video 4K limited editions box sets. But this is a really nice horror film in American Werewolf in London. It stars Griffin Dunn, who of course starred in Scorsese's After Hours, and he helped to produce he helped produce Chilly Scenes of Winter. So this is a really good movie he was in called An American Werewolf in London. Poltergeist on 4K, really good film. This was my first time actually watching this film in its entirety when I picked this up last year. One of those nice 4K horror titles that came out last year. Really, really good film. Steven Spielberg produced it. Toby Hooper directed it. Has a warning on here about lights, flashing lights that may affect certain viewers who have photosensitivity, so be on the lookout for that. But this is a really good movie. Enjoyed this film, seeing it last year. Sam Raimi's The Evil Dead. Classic, all-time classic, starring Bruce Campbell. Gotta love this stuff. This is my favorite release of a single film last year on physical media. It is Dario Argento's Tenebrae on Arrow Video 4K Ultra HD Limited Edition box. This is a great release, folks. This is a terrific release of a terrific film. I love the film. I love the music. I love the special features. They really help you understand the giallo movement even more. Really love this edition. This is an excellent edition from Arrow Video of Tenebrae. So really good stuff. Stars John Saxon, who of course a decade earlier appeared in Enter the Dragon. So good stuff. David Cronenberg did Scanners. He also did Videodrome. So Videodrome is a fantastic film. It's probably my favorite of Cronenberg's output. This is the 4K from Arrow that I highly recommend. It's a very nice upgrade in picture quality over the excellent Blu-ray that came out from Criterion. Interestingly enough, Criterion is upgrading this Blu-ray edition to 4K in the month of October for those who are interested. Maybe you have the Arrow Blu-ray of Videodrome and you wanna upgrade to 4K, you might wanna go ahead and get that Criterion 4K. If you already happen to have the Criterion Blu-ray that I had, then you might wanna consider doing the Arrow 4K if you're interested in upgrading. So, because you wanna get all those special features. So, that's my little recommendation there. Continuing on with John Carpenter's Christine. This is a classic from the 80s. It's been a long time since I've seen this movie. I've got this on this Steelbook edition that's very cool. Not a lot going on on the inside there, but you know. Little Steelbook edition there. Got the little J card going on here. So I need to rewatch this film. It's been a while since I've seen Christine. Matilda May and Steven Railsback, Patrick Stewart, Life Force. This Toby Hooper film from the early 80s or mid 80s. In the blink of an eye, the terror begins from the director of Poltergeist. So Toby Hooper directed Poltergeist, then he, he directed Life Force. Really fascinating film. It's got Patrick Stewart in there before he became, became Jean-Luc Picard in the Star Trek series, The Next Generation. So it has a, a pre-Picard Patrick Stewart. So you have here Fright Night. This is a film that I enjoyed as a kid. Really enjoyed this movie. Seeing this on this 4K edition from last year was such a delight. I, it was just fantastic seeing this film look so good on this nice 4K disc. So really enjoyed Fright Night. It's a good movie. Fun movie, fun movie. Evil Dead Part Two, also directed by Sam Raimi and starring Bruce Campbell. I saw The Lost Boys for the first time last year with this 4K release. Nice stuff. Good film, good film. Thanks again to Miss Sue over at Movies and Sue for introducing me to the Chucky films. I think the first four of these films came out before the year 2001. So this is the Child's Play movie came out, I think in 1988. Then you have Child's Play 2, Child's Play 3, and then The Bride of Chucky, which I think came out in the late 90s. And then from there, The Seed of Chucky, Curse of Chucky, and Cult of Chucky, I think came out uh, after 2001. So the first four movies of this series came out during this period of 1980 through 2000. So really enjoyed these first few films. I'm going to get 
the first, second, and third films on 4K Ultra HD. And then I think with that, plus what I have here in these Blu-rays for the other films, I think I'm good when it comes to Chucky. So looking forward to getting those titles on 4K. That new Arrow set that's coming out, a lot of people are going to be interested in picking that up. Of course, the first Child's Play is not on 4K in that set. It's on Blu-ray, but the other six films are on 4K Ultra HD. So depending on your situation, that Arrow set might be appealing to you. But for my case, I am perfectly happy just upgrading the first three films to 4K and then the rest I have on Blu-ray in this nice set from Miss Sue. So thank you, Miss Sue. Anthony Perkins in Edge of Sanity. I have not seen this film yet, but I love Anthony Perkins, so I want to check this one out. Everybody's telling me that The Exorcist 3, skip Exorcist 2, just watch The Exorcist, which I have. I've seen that movie. Amazing film. And they just say, look, skip Exorcist 2, go straight to Exorcist 3. So that is exactly what I will do. I have not popped this in the player yet but I'm looking forward to checking this out. It says from the creator of the original Exorcist. So William Peter Blatty wrote and directed this film and I'm looking forward to checking it out. Guillermo del Toro, Kronos, Kronos. This Criterion Edition 551 is the spine number. This is a film from Guillermo del Toro that came out in 1993. Really good film. This is a good film. If you have not checked out Kronos, you like Guillermo del Toro, this is a good film to check out. This is one of his earlier, early films. So this is a really, really good. This actually is his, I was thinking, is this his feature debut? It is his feature debut. This is his first feature film, Kronos. So definitely check it out if you're a fan of Guillermo del Toro, which I imagine a lot of you are. I'm also a fan of getting my menu back up on the screen, so. Don't want to forget that. The first screen movie, Wes Craven. Drew Barrymore there on the back there. Nice film. Nice film. A lot of people have been telling me before this release came out that they were looking forward to Cure being released by Criterion. It finally came out last year. And after watching this film, I really understand why. This is a really nice thriller. Fantastic film. Cure. This is from director Kiyoshi Kurosawa. No relation to Akira Kurosawa, but he's a great director. This is a great film and I highly recommend it. It's from 1997, 111 minutes, spine number 1155 in the Criterion Collection. So check it out. I have not rewatched I Know What You Did Last Summer. I need to. I have it on this 4K Ultra HD edition here. So I need to check this out again. Same with Screen 2. Got this Screen 2 screen uh, steel book. So I need to rewatch this film. It's been a long time since I've seen it. But this is a nice follow-up to the original Scream movie. Scream 2. Lionsgate continues to kill it with these steel books. And this one is an example of that American Psycho. This is my original Blu-ray. This is the 4K. It's got this nice slip. Check this out. Isn't that, isn't, isn't that cool? Isn't that cool? Then on the back, you have um, you have that. This is Christian Bale before he became Bruce Wayne in The Dark Knight, before the Christopher Nolan Dark Knight trilogy films. So that covers my 1980s through 2000 as part of my classic films. My first video was contemporary horror titles in my collection, but I forgot to include three titles that I'm gonna share with you right now. These are the three titles that, for whatever reason, I didn't pull them, forgot to share them. So I'm going to do a little bit of an addendum here. The Devil's Backbone, Guillermo del Toro. This film came out in 2001, so it should have been included in my first video, but I'm including it here. This film stars Robert De Niro and Dakota Fanning. I have it on DVD widescreen, and it is a 2005 film, Hide and Seek. Really nice film. It's a chilling roller coaster ride, it says on the back. Now, who directed this film? John Polson. This is a nice film. It's not the best film ever, but it's, it's a very nice, solid horror thriller, hide and seek. And of course, this is a big omission. I totally forgot to include The Witch in my contemporary horror titles, the Robert Eggers film from 2015, starring Anya Taylor-Joy. This is a really good movie. Evil takes many forms. 
There's Evil in the Wood. This should have been included in my contemporary horror titles, but I forgot. So The Witch. So there you have it. Those are my classic horror films from 1980 through the year 2000, as well as I showed you my titles that I forgot to include in my first video, my contemporary horrors. The next video, I'll share with you my classic horrors part two, where I will cover all the classic films in the horror genre that I have in my collection before the year 1980. So let me know what you think of these films in the comments section below. Let me know what some of your favorite horror titles are from the 1980s through the year 2000. Let me know what some of your favorites are from that period. Let me know what horror titles you're watching lately and what you're looking forward to picking up on physical media. Let me know all that goodness in the comments section below. And as always, thanks for watching and we'll look forward to seeing you next time at the movies. Peace.